because right now that black and white value goes from 0 to 1. But remember, hue in HSV channels is already on a range from 0 to 1. We need to adjust the hue very, very slightly. I'm talking we need to adjust the hue from here to maybe there. And even that might be a little exaggerated. But that's a difference of maybe 1 20th, you know, 0.05, even less than that, 0.03. So what we need to do is we need to scale our noise channel to go from 0 to 1 to negative 0.02 to 0.02 or some similar value. And that's what our hue adjustment slider is for. So the minimum for this will be, yeah, let's just go with 0. And then the maximum value I'm going to make 0.05, 1 20th. And I'll put it halfway in the middle. So for the remap, this is going to start getting a little confusing here. But for the remap, I'm going to plug in the blue channel. Here is the value. For the input min and max, I'll plug in static values here because we're not actually going to be changing these. It'll go from 0 to 1. to 0.05 to negative 0.05. So what I need is a negate node. That'll bring us, give us negative 0.03, and that'll be our input min. Now it may be very, very hard to see. I'm not sure if you can tell, but there is actually a very dark image that can be made out there. Great. So now we have our remapped noise. I'm actually going to take all of this, drag it out over here maybe. And then for our hue, what we're going to do is we're going to add that remapped value. So what I'll do is I'm going to add in an add node. I'll hit control D to duplicate it. So our hue, we're going to add our remapped noise value. And then what we're going to do is we are going to merge, collapse this all back into an RGB. So we'll hold down H, we have HSV to RGB. So the new hue, we're going to add right there. And then the new saturation, we're just going to, or the old saturation will remain unchanged. But just so we're not drawing lines going straight through the node, I'm going to add in what's known as a relay node, which is just a nice way to organize your node structures. And as you see, now our hue is slightly different. Again, these relay nodes don't actually do anything. It's just for organizing your node structure. It simply outputs its input. And then I will plug these guys in. So now as I start to make adjust this slider, you can see my paint colors are changing ever so slightly. It's a very subtle change, but it still means that our paint colors will now no longer be just one solid shade. It'll look like they sort of degraded over time. If you watched my tutorial on texturing the assembly crane, the part where I adjusted the hue of the yellow paint, it's a very similar idea behind this. 
So that is the shader in a nutshell. That's all the functionality it needs to have. So now to actually make a material out of it, let me just drag this over to the side. Really quick. I'll bring in that particular set of wings. And then I'll need to make a material using this shader. So I can go to props. I'll select ship component new, right click, and create material. And I will call this some steel carapace. Now you see we have all of our inputs in here. So I can drag that onto my two models. Their UVs allow them both to borrow from this same shader. But as you see, now I can change their colors. You can make this maybe some sort of a yellow and then up the hue adjustment. So you can see the yellow turns a little bit orange. But those are, that's the power of these node-based material editors. They're very flexible, very easy to use, and allow you to iterate on shaders very quickly, especially if you are not as experienced with programming shaders yourself. That does it for this tutorial series. I know it was a little bit shorter than what I usually put out, but that's the gist of texturing for this type of workflow, sort of keeping that in mind, how to combine your textures in Photoshop, and ultimately how to create your shader using those textures and various parameters inside of whatever node-based material editor you are using. I hope you found all of this useful, or at the very least, interesting, and thank you for watching.